Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero, and it's time for another little editorial vlog thingy. So, as of the time that I'm recording this, which is April 16th, 2014, um, we missed the news break that White Wolf has closed, or rather, White Wolf has been closed by CCP, which is its current, currently its, well, was currently its parent, was its parent company. White Wolf is the company that makes the world, or made the World of Darkness, um, both in its old and new forms. This is the old world of darkness for Dark and Vampire the Masquerade. We're talking Werewolf the Apocalypse. We're talking Hunter the Reckoning, Mage the Ascension, that sort of thing. With the New World of Darkness, it's um, Vampire the Requiem, Mage the uh, Ascension. No, I'm sorry, Mage the Ascension is Old World. Mage the Ascension is Old World of Darkness. Mage the Awakening is New World of Darkness. Um, Hunter the Requiem. All that fun stuff. Now, I say made, not just because there are no longer any, White Wolf is no longer in existence, but because White Wolf stopped publishing role-playing game material shortly after they were acquired by CCP, and all subsequent White Wolf mater uh, material in the new and old World of Darkness that have come out since the merger have been put out by a company called Onyx Path. And to explain why things are this way, I also kind of need to get into why I'm kind of upset with CCP over the whole thing. I'm not showing it. I'm not ranting and raving and swearing like the angry video game nerd, but I'm disappointed and upset with this whole thing. So, to talk about this from the beginning, we need to begin at the beginning, as all good stories do, with how the merger happened in the first place. From the accounts I've heard, I'm, I've never worked at White Wolf. I can't say I was on the inside for any of this. From insiders, what happened was, CCP, who was at the time, they're the company who makes EVE Online, had approached White Wolf because they were interested in, in licensing the World Darkness intellectual property for purposes of making an MMO. If you know anything about both the world's darkness and EVE Online, you can understand why this works so well. Because while, yes, the world of darkness, but the old world of darkness was kind of heavily metaplot driven and driven by the actions of NPCs who were in many ways more powerful than anything the players were. Like, we're talking like the Ancient vampires like Cain and various other sort of kind of Mary Stewish character, Mary Sue slash Marty Stewish characters throughout the game lines. Um, if you're familiar with the setting, you know who I'm talking about. Um, if you're not familiar with the setting, Google Wraith, the Oblivion, and Ashtray. And you'll get the full story. Let me get the game of the character for you. Alternatively, the name of the character in question was Samuel Haight. H-A-I-G-H-T. Look him up. Read his story. That's kind of some of the metaplot stuff that happened with the old World of Darkness. They aren't doing that as much with the new World of Darkness, but you still have situations where the various types of characters are interacting with each other. Um, but even then, with the uh, old World of Darkness, you had... Um, particularly Vampire, which is what they were mainly focusing on when they first announced the World of Darkness MMO. With the old Vampire setting, you had a good sort of setup for for an MMO there. You had two factions. In fact, you had the Camarilla and the Sabbat. The... I mean, if you've seen Blade, the first Blade movie, then you kind of see the sort of split there. Deacon Frost is the Sabbat. He... Uh, Humans are our food. We should be enslaving them. They shouldn't fear us. We should, other, we, we should, we should not be fearing them. We should not be hiding from them. They should fear us. We should rule them in the open, uh, as opposed to ruling them through proxies because they find out they'll kill us or that sort of thing. Camarilla are like, no, no. This is how we've done it before. 
to San Francisco State doing it in the past when we've tried to go public, things haven't turned out well. And that's kind of the faction divide. And each faction generally has certain vampire clans that tend to go either one way or the other, though some can go um, whatever way that the predominant one is. Um, for example, I've generally seen Nosferat, the, the, the clan Nosferatu generally played as Sabbat, but on the other hand, they could totally be done as, it could totally be Cam as well, depending again how you play it, how the player chooses. So you kind of have your, to put it in the context of World of Dark, of, um, of, uh, World of Warcraft, edit that fumbling out. To put in the context of World of, Ro of Warcraft, you have your Horde, you have your Alliance, and and while each side has their ra has races that are predominantly one side or the other, later on you can patch it so that you can have your Alliance Orc, you can have your um, or Alliance Night Elf, you can have your Horde human, or what have you. That sort of thing. With all this concept, I mean, it, it really feels like, if, if you hear the discussions about what the MMO is going to be, that this MMO was right in CCP's wheelhouse. It's perfect for them, perfect for the type of game they do. Because um, you have, I mean, you have your vampire coteries, which are, in the game terms, this is your party of, of characters. But this, in MMO terms, this can be your clans, your corporations, your guilds, or what have you. So this is perfect. And, by accounts, CCP and White Wolf hit it off really well. The members of the management from the two companies who met to get negotiations about this were on really good terms. So well, they decided to merge. And this is where things go bad, because what happens as a result of this is because CCP is basically the dominant company this merger. They have more capital coming in. It's almost as much of a buyout as more than a merger. Because CCP, I'll be honest, they are a video game company. They're a computer game company. When they built their MMO, EVE Online, they built it as an MMO. They didn't build it off of uh, existing tabletop IP. And I'd say a lot of them, while they may have played tabletop role-playing games, they don't have much background in that business. So I don't think they got how the tabletop industry works. I mean, I'm not in the industry, and while I'm not going to say I grok or understand not fully and completely how the tabletop role-playing industry works, I kind of feel like I have a better understanding of it than what, honestly, CCP had. Because CCP decided to stop putting out World of Darkness, and for that matter, Exalted, to um, the other main IP that White Wolf had at the time, books in any form. Not PDF, not print, not print on demand, nothing. And if you're knowledgeable about the industry, this is a baffling decision. These games are doing strongly, they're doing really well, they have a strong fan base. Why? Why would you do this? I mean, it's not that, to be, to, to be fair to them, they didn't do what WotC did when they the first time they got out of the digital PDF market, which is yank everything off of websites so you can't get it at all. They put all their catalog online, which is good, but they decided, oh, we're going to stop supporting the game. From again, This is baffling if you approach it from a tabletop gaming fan standpoint. If you look at it from their perspective, it's possible. I can think of a few reasons why they made this decision. But none of them are really good. First reason I can see, the first reason I had when I got out of this was this. CCP didn't want to cause brand confusion with their upcoming MMO. 
the World Darkest MMO. They didn't want to be put in a situation where, while designing the game, they were chasing plot material or game mechanics from tabletop game. This is possible reason one, and it doesn't work. Or at least, it's a bad decision because, well, when they announced the World of Darkness MMO at E3, or was it their Eve convention? Anyway, when they announced it, they said that they're basing it on the old World of Darkness. It is a game line that is effectively stagnant. There is no narrative plot element there. They brought the meta plot for the setting to a definite conclusion. It ended. Everything for all the game lines. For Changeling, for Hunter, for Vampire, they wrote in, they wrote a supplement that ended it. The end. And they stopped doing Old World Darkness and moved on to New World of Darkness. So, White Wolf not wasn't going to be putting out any new game material for Vampire the Masquerade, for Mage the Ascension, any of that sort, anyway. So, there's that. There is the possibility that we're about brand confusion, which I could kind of see, but again, not really. It's, it's the sort of thing where a little education of your audience you're fine. If you have anything to worry about, it's okay. The other possibility I've heard is relates to a guy named Ryan Dancy. Ryan Dancy used to work in the tabletop role-playing game industry. And basically, what he did is he left the industry, um, Particularly, um, we left Alderac Entertainment Group and um, Wizards of the Coast. What happened was um, Ryan Dancy decided to start his own company to basically serve as sort of a consulting firm or consultant on. Well, adapting tabletop role-playing games to the MMO space. And as part of his stance with this, or the way he sort of advertised himself with this, was that, well, to take the position, tabletop, tabletop role-playing game industry was dying, not dead, and the future of the role-playing game space was in subscription-based MMORPGs. Now, if you're knowledgeable at either, well, either one of these, if you've been following these fields, you know this is dumb. You know, straight up, this is a dumb thing to be saying. Numerous, numerous companies have put out subscription-based MMOs daring to take on the juggernaut that is World of Warcraft and failed horribly. Either they had to shut it down or they had to take it free to take their games free to play with varying degrees of success or variations of free to play like for example the secret world went towards the buy-in model of Guild Wars which is you buy a copy of the game at 60 bucks 60 bucks 40 bucks or whatever, and you can play the game more or less forever as long as the servers stay up. This is aggravate. This leads to additional problems uh, related to how the video game industry or video game press covers video games because tabletop role playing games aren't dying. People have said rocket. People have said tabletop role playing games are going to die. Role playing games are dead. Almost as often, if not more often, than they've said rock and roll is dead, and rock and roll has been around longer than tabletop role-playing games. So, I mean, we got companies... Well, well I mean, we had situations where large numbers of companies were closing. The Guardians of Order in Canada closed. We had some of the companies that sprung up out of the uh, D20 boom 
licensing boom closed. But many of new companies were born out of this as well. Um, but ultimately what happens is this boom and it's been to be too small for people outside of the industry to really be paying attention to. Um, and in particular, as tabletop role-playing games have, and the distribution and sale thereof, have moved towards PDF and print-on-demand and online, it's harder for people outside of the industry to have any sort of visibility of this, to see that the industry is thriving and doing really well. Um, which leads to members of the video game press saying that nobody plays tabletop role-playing games anymore, and the, and the tabletop role-playing game industry is dead because they don't play the games anymore, and when they go into bookstores, they don't see a variety of stuff on the shelves. What they see is they might see White Wolf, they might see Warhammer, and they might see, and they will see D&D. &D. And it also means that any criticism or di verbally spoken dislike of D&D, &D, Pathfinder, or New World of Darkness, or whatever online, tends to be the only perspective that they get on this. Because, so... This leads to a negative feedback loop when it comes to people from the outside who don't follow the industry trying to work inside. Um, in particular, so the situation with Ryan De or if Ryan Dancy meets up with an executive at CCP from CCP at a convention or a con or professional conference or at any sort of professional level and said, the tabletop role-playing game business is dying, you need to get out of it, you need to take it subscription-based MMO, let me help you adapt a, adapt the tabletop game mechanics into a MMO um, environment, it makes it easier to sell that sort of thing. And I don't have an exact timetable on whether CCP took White Wolf out of the publishing game um, before or after Dancy was hired, but considering the perspective that Dan and the, the statements that Dancy had been making, I, it's, impo it's impossible for me to say that they are unrelated. So there's that problem. This is all aggravated by the fact that it's in Dancy's best interests to scream the sky is falling, because when your job that you've decided you're going to do for yourself, you're for independent freelance consulting job is we need to take your tabletop games and turn them into MMOs, subscription-based MMOs, because tabletop gaming is dying. Rather, put another way, if your business is taking tabletop RPGs and turning them into MMOs, it is your business to get to persuade MMO publishers to want to license these IPs and turn them into MMOs, and also your job to heavily push publish put push the publishers of these RPGs to go, oh, I need to do something. Maybe this business isn't as healthy as I thought it was. All this sort of thing. Um, it says a lot that Dancy hasn't had that much success on this in terms of pushing this viewpoint. The only you know, as I can tell the only people who really bought into it were CCP. Paizo Publication, the publisher of Pathfinder, have brought Dancy on to con consult on their planned Pathfinder MMO, but it I mean they're not going to be Paizo's not going to be buying into this this attitude anytime soon. They can look at the numbers and see that their adventure path subscriptions are selling well, their books are selling well. They can say, hey, we're doing pretty well. You're you're sell you'd be selling rhetoric that the tabletop role playing game business is dying to people who don't understand who know the tabletop role-playing game business. On the other hand, though, he's selling subscription-based MMO language to people who may not know the MMO business that well. So there's that problem, too. All in all, Ryan Dancy's a giant bundle of bad news. Bad news and bad and misinformed opinions. Perhaps deliberately misinformed opinions. But anyway, what all of this leads into is... CCP deciding, okay, if the tabletop role-playing game business is dying, if it's not dead, if it, if, even if it's not dead already, it's dying, it's on the way out, 
then probably we shouldn't be in this business. We probably should be putting money into this. Let's just focus on the MMO, and we'll close down our first-party development for the game, for our t for the tabletop role-playing game side. And so this leads the situation we had prior to the closure. White Wolf effectively exists existed for the development of the World of Darkness MMO. And in turn, companies like Onyx Path were able to license out basically large chunks of the World of Darkness. Um, another company whose name escapes me also licensed out the um, Mind's Eye Theater rules, which was the uh, LARP rules that were created for um, New World of Darkness and Old World of Darkness. And this leads to the next part of my complaint, which is, by all accounts, the licensing agreements for the New World of Darkness were too restrictive, in my opinion. Um, the best example of how of the problems here comes with a source book, or other chronicle book. Chronicle is like a campaign, a series of adventures for uh, when when used in a old World of Darkness or general generally. You know, a World of Darkness storyteller system sense. Um, the Chronicle book for New World of Darkness called The God Machine Chronic uh, Chronicle. And what this was, or is, it's currently out in print, print on demand, and as PDF. What God Machine is, is basically New World of Darkness 1.5. Normally, what a company would do the tabletop role-playing game publisher would do is for the level of, of rules changes, because there are a bunch of rule changes that need to be made for New World of Darkness. Things that were broken, things that need to be rebalanced, things which weren't explained properly originally. All these things that need to be fixed, and those fixes were bundled in this Chronicle book. And actually, with this book, you basically can pretty much run the World of Darkness more or less on its own. Um, on its own. You might need the original core rule book for some things. This is basically your new New World of Darkness core book, but they can't bundle it as a first as a full edition upgrade. They can't do a second edition level like rules overhaul because their terms of their license wouldn't let them do that, and that's stupid. I can understand why Onyx Path agree to these terms, because ultimately when it comes to something like this, the rule, the all the power lies with the licensor, CCP. It's the kind of thing that's come up with tabletop role-playing games based on actual licensed properties like Doctor Who and Star Wars and that sort of thing. Whatever you publish has to be run past your main parent company, whether it's... Um, the BBC for Doctor Who, Lucasfilm, or now Disney for Star Wars, or when um, Living Room Games was trying to put out the Capcom World Tournament role-playing game, which sadly never came out, they had to run everything past Capcom. And so if you want to put... So basically, you have to wait on them and their licensing people to make any changes, and if they say no, you're stuck with it. And if your contract says you can't do a thing, you can't do that thing no matter what. Um, you can't do, with your Star Wars role-playing game, if you want to do a source book on how to make everything darker and edgier, you can't do the darker and edgier source book unless perhaps you put it in the context of something like the Star Wars Legacy comic book series that Dark Horse put out, or the New Jedi Order comic book series, not the comic book series, the novel series that was published, that sort of thing. Um, so, this is all kind of dumb. I understand my Onyx Path agreed to this, but I wish, but I feel they shouldn't have needed to in the first place, particularly if CCP had any understanding of the industry. And this leads finally to the closure. This past week, CCP closed White Wolf and laid off everybody who was there, and they officially canceled the World of Darkness MMO. The World of Darkness MMO cancellation wasn't too surprising. Uh, CCP had basically submerged the game for so long that it didn't come across the paperwork. We weren't getting new updates, we weren't getting art, we weren't getting press releases, 
We weren't getting any discussion of how the game's coming along, what the mechanics were, were going to be, anything like that. So it's pretty clear, for like almost a year, the game's probably dead. A year to six months, the game is pro- the MMO is probably dead, but White Wolf was still there. Um, people who worked on White Wolf were still there. So there was always some hope for something coming out of White Wolf, or White Wolf working with CCP to do something. There's kind of hope there. But now, loads of people have all been laid off. So, what does this mean for the World of Darkness? New World of Darkness, and Onyx Path, and all this sort of thing. Um, I really don't know. Which is kind of the situation that's partly in flux. Here's what my hope is. My hope is that Onyx Path will, as part of this, because White Wolf basically no longer really exists as anything other than a name, be able to get more control of the World of Darkness. That they'll be able to negotiate terms with CCP basically along the lines of, look, you're not doing anything with this. Let us do more with it. That they'll be able to put out new editions of the new World of Darkness game system. Um... That sort of thing. They'll loosen the restrictions on what they can or cannot do with the game. Do I think that CCP is going to just divest themselves of the White Wolf IP and the White Wolf name? No. Unfortunately, the way the business game industry works now, particularly the video game industry, nobody lets anything go when it comes to IP. Uh, that White Wolf, the name... All the other properties are going to be stay with CCP, even if CCP never does anything with them ever again. Even if CCP goes, oh, we decide, you know, maybe we might do something with this after all, takes the, the all their licenses back in, retracts the license, revokes the licenses, and then just doesn't do anything with it, just sits on it and changes their mind, but doesn't license it out either. That's possible that can happen. Because again, the way this industry industry set up, nobody gets rid of gets rid of anything. Everyone's hoarders for IP, even if it's an because even if it's an IP that they're not going to use, and they have no intention of using. If they let it go, someone else can use it and make money off it, and that's bad. Or rather, bad for the publisher, not bad for the fans. For the fans, making games is good. Making games in worlds we love is great. We want games in our favorite worlds. But that's pro- but with CCP and with White Wolf, I don't think they're going. With CCP, they're not going to let that go, which is a bummer. But oh well. Um, I, again, I do hope that, at the very least, if anything, anything at all good, good comes out of this, that CCP loosens the, loosens the licensing restrictions on Onyx Path and lets them make the RPGs that they know how to make. They're good at making and that they'll be successful at making. And just let, just let them do their job, the job they're good at, and let CCP focus on the MMO space, which is what, by all accounts, they are good at. Enough of my ramblings on this topic. Um, I'll see you next time. If you enjoy my little discussion, please support me via the Patreon link at the um, on the show notes. It'll help me improve my setup and get episodes out a little more frequently. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.